four, three, two, one. All right, we're live. What's up, man? What's up, dude? Nice. What's hilarious, folks? I have to tell you this. <laughs> I did a podcast earlier today, and he said, wow, it's your second for the day. He goes, impressive endurance. <laughs> Do you know how fucking ridiculous that is for you to say? <laughs> this is a guy who walked across Antarctica. How many days did it take you? 54 days. By yourself. By myself. Trekking yes, across the fucking frozen tundra. It, that was an endurance feat of its own. Yeah, just no, back. No, that's uh, a real endurance feat. I'm just sitting down talking to people. <laughs> oh my god, you talked already for two hours. How do you do it? <laughs> two more hours. Here we go. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. Yep. Dude, what the fuck were you doing? Just, just getting back. Actually, still, uh, still practically have the snow on my shoes. Yeah, I got back about a month ago. Fifty-four day journey. First person in history to uh, cross the entire continent solo, unsupported. So no resupplies throughout the thing. No, no aid. No wind. Kites. Nothing. Just me dragging a three hundred seventy-five pound sled across Antarctica. I can't believe it only took you fifty-four days. Yeah, yeah. Why was, did, why, I mean, that's it's so big. <laughs> like, look at Antarctica on a map. Like, how long do you think it would take you to walk across America? Well, you got so we Mountains. usually look at Antarctica on a map. This is hilarious. I have showed right. people a picture of Antarctica. You're a smart guy. You probably know this, but usually people see it on a, uh, a map projection because they think it's flat, yeah. right? Right. But it's actually circular. Yeah. Um, so I went from the edge of the Ron Ice Shelf to the Ro- uh, via the South Pole to the Ross Ice Shelf. So basically, kind of a diagonal across through the center and then back to the other ice shelf. What uh, do the flat earthers think about <laughs> your, your your traversing this this area? Look, this uh, is what you did. This is how you there you it made is it. exactly yeah. So you yep. went to the center of the fucking earth basically there you, you it went is to the top of the pole yeah bottom of wow. the earth you know standing down there holding everyone up on my shoulders wow so you were at the south pole and then you trekked over to the to the ice shelf on yep. the other side it's wow. funny you say about the flat earthers though because all jokes aside i've been getting a lot of trolling on my instagram page <laughs> from the flat earthers i've got guys going like oh I, I was doing this speech the other day People are super nice, come up in the Q&A afterwards, want to shake my hand, take a picture, whatever. And this guy walks up with this real earnest look on his face. And he's like, so I really wanted to ask you, how is the hole? And I was like, excuse me? And he was like, you know, the hole at the center. And I was like, um, I, give me a little more. He was like, you know, like when you got to the edge. <laughs> And I was like, oh, man, like, you're really asking me this question right now. Oh. Like, we are talking about this. I didn't quite know where to go with it. I was like, oh. yeah, there was actually, I, at least I didn't see the edge, and the curvature kept going, and I made it to the other side. It is such a strange thing to believe, but people do. And the, 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 people think people are trolling about that. And you know what? It actually started out. It's another 4chan thing, you know. Did you know that? It's well, I'm sure there was probably somebody who believed it before that, but it started off people were trolling on 4chan, then eventually people just started actually going, Hey, yeah, I, b- I bet it is flat. And then they started believing it, and videos, YouTube videos yeah. popped up. There's another YouTube video someone linked to me the other day, and I thought it had like I thought it had like a few hundred views, but it had 28,000 views. And it was these, all these guys debating, like, Colin proved that there's not a wall, like the wall, like there would be like Game mm. of Thrones at the edge of the world. There's yeah. this whole conversation. About I bet that. there's another 28,000 people. It's proved that Colin never actually went because oh, we course. know <laughs> he's a, a new world order shill well the other the other funny one was that we got a bunch on the instagram page i'm out there alone completely by myself but right. i want to share the whole story through my instagram to like share the journey with people inspire others to do whatever they want to do and i kept being like well i mean he's not out there alone he's taking pictures i was like the film crew it's like, guys, have you never heard of a tripod and a, and a timer? Uh, um, have and you I never like, watched Survivor Man? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so it's some funny comments along those lines. So your your sled was 300 and how many pounds? 375 pounds to start. So basically, uh, food and fuel was the main, the main weight. So people, I called my project The Impossible First. That's sort of what I named the project because several people had That's tried. That's it right there? Yeah, oh there my it God. is. So not only are you walking, you're dragging this big ass heavy sled yeah yeah and Fuck, the, dude people so people have tried this uh you know going back a hundred years to Sh- Ernest shackleton saying if it was possible and then the last few years some really experienced polar explorers have given it a shot and one guy actually died less than 100 miles from the finish line um because of you know lack of nutrition and, and some challenges with the weather and things like that um but people called it you know people after that were like it's impossible and the reason people thought it was impossible was because 
you can't get resupplies, meaning if you fill your sled with food at a certain amount, you actually can't drag the sled anymore. So the whole mm. math equation really was figuring out just how much food and fuel I could put in the sled. The fuel melts the water, so melts the ice into water essentially, and that equaled to 375 pounds. And to be truth, I could barely pull it on the first day. Like I, uh, one hour into getting dropped off, I'm dropped off completely alone out there in Antarctica. I planned this project for a year, you know, uh, and uh, I get dropped off, and after about one hour pulling through. 375 pounds sled through the snow it's minus 25 degrees out I'm, cr I'm crying I'm literally crying and the tears in my goggles are starting to freeze and I'm like oh my god so I pick up my satellite phone I call home to my wife Jenna who also creates and plans all these projects with me and I'm like babe uh, I think we named the project the right thing, uh, the impossible verse. Yep, uh, it looks like it might be impossible to keep Jesus. going. So I'm one hour into a thousand mile journey pulling a sled, told everyone I'm going to do this and I'm already having those doubts pull up. But, you know, fortunately I was able to get a little bit further that day and 54 hour days later made it to the end. But How far did you get in the first day? Well, it's funny because we show, just show the map. I actually, you know, it starts on an ice shelf, which is basically the frozen sea ice. And there's an edge of that. That's the, where the continent starts. And so I have a waypoint on my GPS that marks that. So the plane that drops me off actually dropped me off on the ice shelf before the continent starts. And my first waypoint was kind of like the actual start. And so one hour in, I haven't even hit the real start. So when, oh, she, when I call her on the phone, she's like, because she knows the route. And she's like, well, how far are you from the first waypoint? Which is where the actual start is. And I'm like, it's. 0.63 more miles. She's like, it's half a mile. You have a thousand more to go. Like, get to the first waypoint, you know? Oh, and I was like, okay, okay. So I, you know, rallied myself, got to the first waypoint, and then finally got in my tent that night and just kind of took a deep breath. I think I was just overwhelmed by the magnitude of it. I mean, imagine being a speck in the middle of Antarctica alone, these crazy temperatures, you know, all the excitement but fears of the journey ahead, um, and 375 pounds on my back. When the sleds, you know, when the snow's deep too and loose snow makes 375 pounds even, even heavier than if it's like light you know icier consolidated so yeah it was a, it was a rough start to say the least did you do any sort of test run pulling the sled anywhere else yeah, so the training element of it was pretty cool. So um, this was, I actually set a few other world records previous to this in the mountains and things we could talk about if you want. But the uh, the last year as I really committed to this project, I um, yeah decided to start, obviously start training specifically for this. Um, I needed to put on about 20 pounds of muscle. I'm usually six foot, 165, pretty lean. I'd raced triathlon professionally for a number of years and realized I needed to be a bit bigger because I was going to lose so much weight. Um, and I found uh, an amazing coach in Portland, Oregon where I live this guy named Mike McCastle I don't know if you've ever heard of him but I know you've had you've had David Goggins on your show yeah. I take it so um, Mike actually surpassed David's pull-up record Mike did 5,804 pull-ups in 20 hours um, I think Goggins did about 4,000 which are both insane to me because so I can do like another thousand and he was wearing Mike was wearing a 30 pound weight vest too. No! yes <laughs> just to add insult no! to injury uh, Mike McCastle absolute absolute legend so anyway Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He did 5,000 fucking chin-ups with a weight vest on? Dude, I barely can do 10. I, I'm right there with you, man. Like, pull-ups are not... I've got some other physical strengths, but the pull-up department is not not my strong suit. That is fucking insane. Get this, too, just because just I got I to gotta big up my man for a second. That's his fourth road right. He also pulled... A F two fifty truck twenty miles across Death Valley uh, <laughs> in a harness. So I'm trying to look for the best guy to teach me how to pull heavy shit. Oh my god, you got the guy. <laughs> I found the guy. I was like, Fuck. damn, this is I the just guy. Love that there's people like that out there that just make you feel like such a <laughs> pussy. Uh, oh and my god. The great, and the greatest thing about Mike, you know, big, strong, jacked dude, but like super soft spoken. She's like, he's like, yeah, I did those pull ups. It was cool. Like so. Anyways, I he went basically to fucked with that record so hard <laughs> he could die and like come back to life and li live a whole nother life, and no one's ever gonna do it. Yeah. So, anyways, my training. He he was the guy. I went to him. Trained out of this gym in Portland, uh, where where he trains out of, and he just he got me bigger. He got me stronger. But he also did all sorts of badass, crazy stuff. I mean, this is a physical challenge, but it's more of a mental challenge than anything. So he had me, you know, my hands in ice buckets doing planks to get my heart rate jacked up and then he'd be like get out of the water then i pull my hands out of the ice buckets do you know i'd be a seated squat against the wall but then he would hand me legos 
And so my hands are frozen. My feet are in ice buckets now in a plank. My heart rate's, you know, 190. And he's like, put this Lego set together. So the de- dexterity of my fingers, the mental acuity to Look pull this all together. There he is. Look at this guy. What a fucking <laughs> savage this guy is. Yeah. He and is. He, he did that for veteran suicides? Yeah, exactly. Wow. So he did, he's got really, really important missions behind all of his projects. He calls them 12 labors. And over his life, he's trying to set 12 ro- world records in various Jesus things. Jesus Christ. There's uh, people that are just, they're just designed different. Yeah. Yeah, so he's the man, but like this crazy training he came up with for me that was like the ice, the the water, the mental acuity, all of this was like, he was like, yo, you're going to be in Antarctica. If your tent blows away when you're pulling it up, you're dead. Like the stakes are that high, 50, 60 mile per hour winds, like right. absolutely crazy. Um, so, Did you ever have an issue like that where you thought the tent could blow away? Um, I think, I don't know if you have it. There's a clip on my Instagram I posted a few days ago of me of me setting up the tent in a minus 80 degrees out, ah! 60 mile per hour winds. Ah! Um, it's pretty gnarly. But yeah, I mean, there was one time when the tent almost did blow away from me. Yeah, there's this one. There's one other one. This is me getting in the tent looking like an absolute disaster. Disaster when I get help with audio, but that's me. Uh, that's me. <laughs> Whoa, you're pulling ice out oh, of your I got eyelashes. caught out in a massive storm. And I just... So hard to get the tent up. I didn't know if I was going to be able to get it up or I was going to have to just keep walking. Jesus. I'm in the tent now. Hoping these tent poles hold. Man, that was really intense. How do you stay warm in that tent? So it's average temperature is about minus 25, minus 30 uh, in Antarctica. But like I said, when the wind jacks up, uh, I don't know if there's that other clip of me setting up the tent, but if you get a chance to see that, it's, you know, it's about, can be about minus 80 outside, which it's hard to wrap your mind around that, but I've tried to put it in perspective by saying, I could take a cup of boiling water and throw it in an air and it immediately turns to ice. Like that's 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 mm. the temperature we're dealing with. Yeah, this is me trying to uh, keep the tent poles together. Usually you'd have someone else to hold on to it, but I'm alone. I'm completely alone out there. So this is me struggling with my tent, just trying to keep it up. I've got it, you know, tied down to my sled there. Um, just battling, battling the winds. And the stake, like I said, the stakes are high. If that blows away, I don't have a spare tent. I've got no extra weight in my, my sled to hold oh. spare stuff. So it's 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 do or die, quite literally, uh, in a moment like that. Did you have a patch kit? I had a couple things repaired, a sewing kit, a patch kit, stuff like that. But if the tent itself or the tent poles, you know, ripped oh, apart, pretty much. Fuck, dude. And, and also, you have to set up your tripod and film this <laughs> yeah. and then press stop and go back inside. And how are you keeping these batteries juiced up? No, this is, this is the film crew, man, that was following oh, yeah, me around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. right of the flat-out film, film crew. Yeah, they're <laughs> near the ice wall. The uh, No, uh, it was basically I had to keep the, the batteries warm by keeping them right against my skin. So I'd keep the batteries right against my skin. My body weight would keep it warm. And the second I wanted to take it out, I'd pull it out real quick, hit play, and then it would you know, usually last a minute or 30, enough to get a little clip or something like that. You couldn't just let it run, but then it would you know, completely freeze. Even a full battery would be you know, on zero battery by pretty quickly. Were you using solar panels? to charge it yeah so one crazy cool thing about antarctica that time of year is it's 24 hours of daylight and so the Mm. sun never sets so even when i'm in my tent in the middle of the night eye mask earplugs to kind of pretend like it's nighttime but 24 hours of daylight so solar panels um keeping everything charged cameras phone batteries all that and are you traveling with are, are you using gps yeah, so I had some waypoints, uh, the GPS waypoints that kind of led my path to the South Pole, et cetera, but mostly actually using a compass. So I'd look at my GPS maybe once every week or something like that just because to get the of bearing. the juice factor? Or just- it was actually just easier. Because, so I basically had like a harness on front of me that would have my GPS or my, my compass kind of off my chest more mm. or less because some of the clips we saw, the sun's out, but actually more than half of the time the clouds would come in. So it'd be just complete and utter whiteout. I couldn't even see one step in front of me. And and so I'd actually have to just stare down at my compass, keep it on this bearing. And so imagine you can't see anything, can't see one step in front of you. I'm pulling a you know 300 pound sled, 12, oh. 13 hours per day, uh, not listening to anything really, complete dead silence, um, and just staring at this compass bearing all day long. So, <laughs> damn, dude, are you going crazy at all? I mean. 
the mental side of it was by far the most interesting side of it for me. Um, you know, have a, a lifelong endurance athlete, but really kind of an exploration into the mind is what it was for me and why I was curious about it. So spending all this time in silence, I've done, are you familiar with uh, uh, Vipassana meditation? These ten, yes. So I've done a couple of these 10 day silent meditation retreats before this, which is 10 days, no reading, no mm -hmm. writing, no eye contact, um, kind of dove into that piece of it. But 54 days alone in Antarctica and complete <laughs> silence was, was next level of that for sure.